What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Talking Blue. I'm Matthew Mooney alongside Luke Langella. We are going to be talking about the Giants 2024 draft class. Once again, Joe Shane did a very good job in the draft this year. This is his third time drafting as the Giants GM. And I thought he did a very good job. I will say, though, I thought out of all three, this was the worst draft class he's had. Not saying by any means it was bad at all. I thought it was a very good draft class. I just thought the other two were a little bit better. But I'm very happy with what we got with what yeah. we got out of the draft class. What do you think about what happened, Luke? Well, you know, I think there were some rounds that were really well executed. The first round, a very well executed round, taking neighbors. He made the right move, the safe move, and overall a great move. And, you know, those are the type of things you have to do. You know, you, you can't listen to the noise, the quarterback noise. They went in, they got the best receiver in the draft, in my opinion. PFF agrees the highest overall player in the first round too as well. So I, I love that pick. I think your second round pick was solid. Third round was at fourth round was a solid pick. Fifth round was at sixth round was at. So I think there was a little more inconsistent. You know, I liked in past years. We've got guys like Wanda Robinson, Jalen Hyatt, some really good playmakers in the second and third rounds. I felt we lacked a little bit there in, in these later rounds as we have in the past few years. Overall though, really solid draft. I think, I saw mostly B plus to A minus grades, and I don't know about you, Matt. I feel like that's a, a good boat for uh, where the Giants should be graded on that. Yeah, I I agree with you. I think around that range is good. Like when I'm grading stuff with like sports related, unless there's a percentage, I don't normally do a plus minus because if I don't have a percentage, then it's kind of hard for me to give. Like, let's say I think someone did. Let's say like for example, like obviously, like if you get um, let's so I think the Giants said like either I I'd give them an I think it's more of an A range grade. Gonna sound a bit biased, so I'll just say an A there. Um, thought they did the draft, did very well in the draft. Um, obviously, like you said, Malik Neighbors was the first round pick. I thought that was the best pick. Obviously, kind of a common sense, like that's kind of a no brainer. But obviously, it was the safe pick and the right thing to do. Like you just said, I there was like obviously like I was um, I was at MetLife, and um, as you guys may or may not know, but I was at MetLife for the first round of the draft, and. I remember I was so nervous when the Giants were on the clock. My palms were sweating, and, like, I was sweating. My heart was, like, literally pounding when Roger Goodell was about to announce the Giants draft pick. I swear, if we picked McCarthy, I think the whole fan base would have rioted, would have started a riot. But, you know, um, I was, like, so the, it exploded when Malik Neighbors was picked. And, like, everyone I talked to pretty much wanted Malik Neighbors for the Giants or at Romo Dunze. Yeah. But, we got neighbors and that's who I've wanted for the last five months. And yes, worked out. Yeah, Matt, if you've been, you know, following along with their show, Matt and I have talked about neighbors. I mean, it was always neighbors for us. We've mm -hmm. talked about it for months now. Uh, you know, even way too early mock drafts. We had neighbors on our board right away. We said, that's going to be the pick. That's the best player for the giants in the draft. And the Bailey. So one of the best players in the draft, he's one of the most athletic. You watch his, his film. It's freakish. I think, now you look at Wandale, had a great, a great year, great bounce back off the torn ACL. Hyatt, you know, quiet year, but he he, we, he showed I could be a threat down the field. I'm a vertical threat. Now you add neighbors in the equation. You have Slayton, Mr. Consistent, obviously going through contract negotiations. But overall, Matt, I look at it and I say, I like this receiver core. You know, I think they're given – now I think it, it's going to fall on DJ. They gave D, DJ They gave DJ some weapons here. And, and that leads to the next guy, Theo Jackson uh, – Theo Johnson. Uh, Penn State tight end, seven receiving touchdowns last year. He has a knack for scoring in the red zone, something that we really struggle with. Matt, give us an opinion on the Penn State tight ends. Yeah, I'm very excited. I think Theo Johnson, I'm a freak athlete. I don't know a whole lot about him, but I watched this film the other day. I like what I saw, especially if we don't have Darren Waller next year, we'll have our tight end one. I think he's the tight end of the future. Yeah, this is a great pickup. I'm very happy with what we did there. There was a, a lot of talk about us possibly getting Cade Stover, the Ohio State tight end. We got Theo Johnson, who is, I'm I'm very happy with the pick. And he's graded one of the highest athletic players in the draft coming mm -hmm. out of a tight end position. That's that's very hard to do. Yeah, you're right. Um, we got our tight end of the future, which I just said. Especially like let's talk about Darren Waller a little bit. So obviously, there's a lot of buzz about him possibly retiring. And um, I don't know, like, what to believe if he, he's going to retire or not. Obviously, we just heard that he got divorced with his wife. He apparently cheated on her, which um, uh, not happy. To, I'm very unhappy to hear that. Um, and yeah, I, I just 
don't I have a lot of respect for a lot of people for people who do that and like you know so if I'm Darren Waller this year like what I would do is I'd play this year see what happens if it goes well play another season or two if it doesn't go well like let's say he gets injured again which is like there's a chance good, good chance that happens and um or if it just if he just doesn't play well then I just retire what do you think about that Luke yeah, I, I think it's interesting if he's going to come back or not. You know, he obviously got divorced recently. See what his – that changes his mind. And, you know, I, I like what we got, though, at tight end. I like Theo Jackson, um, Theo Johnson. I've been saying uh, Bellinger's a, a future tight end. I really like two big guys. And I said Lawrence Cager. I mean, I've been saying this on the show now for two years. We've been doing this. I've said he's one of the most athletic players the Giants have. They should get him the ball more. Last year, he got the ball. He showed. Um, just interesting thing, he's barely played. When he's been on the field, he's got touchdowns. Anytime he gets active, he seems to find his way into the end zone. On very similar, these speed outs. He's an athletic guy. He's a mismatch for defensive backs, and I I really like him back there. And I I think overall this tight end core is nice. And you know if Waller in there, I think that tight end core gets even better. But if he's going to be hurt, doesn't even know if he's going to play. Maybe I just ride with what we got, and that leads to the defensive side of the ball, Matt. Um, our defensive. Let's be honest, our defense was looking pretty good. We have some holes. Uh, let's not lie about that, but in debatably, we have the best pass rush in the league. We have a great young safety, a great young corner, two star middle linebackers. So I, I think the big problem was we needed a little bit more secondary. Tyler Newbin, Andrew Phillips uh, addressed Tyler Newbin 13 at career interceptions. That's a Minnesota record. And Andrew Phillips, the nickel from, uh, well, who will play nickel from Kentucky, looked impressive in tape, a little bit lower grade of a pick. But they decided they want to go nickel, leaving the second round, uh, the second corner open, which would be between McLeod, Hawkins, Long, obviously just got signed. So, Matt, it, it's going to be a competition for that second uh, cornerback spot on the Giants defense. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think it's definitely, you know, it was we kind of viewed it as like a hole for a while. Like that's definitely going into last offseason. The Giants needed to address that hole. Like, obviously, we had a Dory Jackson. We needed another good corner next to him. And now a Dory Jackson's likely going to be gone. Now we have Deontay Banks, who's our number one corner, and we're gonna and we need to figure out who our second corner is. I think Andrew Phillips is a good shot at it, uh, at getting that role. I heard um, Andrew Phillips probably looking more at nickel. He'll probably be cornerback three playing in the slot, a little yeah. bit smaller body. Yeah, maybe um, Nick McLeod. So I, I, like, I, I just another thing to cut in there. Uh, we posted this on our Talking Blue Twitter. Go check it out. Uh, got over 2,000 views, ton of likes. We posted something on Nick McLeod. Four turnovers, four sides here. He was graded very high on PFF for limited snap counts. He was an excellent when he was on the field last year. I'd really like to see him get more reps, Matt. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I really like what I saw from him. I think he's a potential, I don't think necessarily a defensive, but they are like a top 10 corner, as top 10 corner potential in the NFL. But I think he's definitely a very a good young piece that's underrated. And I think given the right chance, he could be good with us. I think he could po- – I could see him getting the second corner job. And speaking of defensive backs, let's talk about Tyler Newbin, our brand-new safety, I guess our Xavier McKinney replacement. Um, yeah, yeah uh, safety out of Minnesota. I We like the pick. You guys may, If you guys follow our TikTok page, you may or may not have seen our reaction, my reaction to the pickup, but I'm very happy with the pick. At first, I was kind of su- – I was kind of shocked that we took him and I was expecting us to go corner with that pick, but I thought it was a good pickup. I think yeah. um, best safety in the draft class. And yeah. Yeah. It was a nice pickup. I mean, the 13 turnovers, 13 interceptions, something to look at. I mean, who doesn't want a corner that could uh, safety that could pick off that many passes. You think Jason Pinnock did everything for us. He was in the backfield making sacks, tackle for loss. In the back end, he was breaking up passes, interceptions, forced fumbles. He was a very good player for us last year. Now you added a guy like Tyler Newbin to replace Xavier McKinney. It's tough. Xavier McKinney was an elite safety. We can't deny that. But Tyler Newbin, 13 interceptions is a lot of interceptions. That's very impressive for a safety. And I'm really excited to see this kid play. Um, You look that that with Dane Belton, too. I mean, I like that safety core. I like those three guys rotating in and out. Um. And then we let me also look at this running back, Matt. I mean, that's a major issue that we had to address. I mean, it was it was tough going fifth round waiting. There was a lot of running backs that went off the board. We took Tyrone Tracy, Purdue running back, eight hundred scrimmage yards last year. Not a bad pickup. Guys only been playing running back for two years, so I, I mean, it's a little 
I don't know, Matt. Uh, NFL comparison, Dalvin Cook doesn't have a great balance. He has that explosiveness that your receiver does, and he's tough to tackle. I mean, he is high graded against missed tackle. The, the only issue is his balance. He doesn't really have that running back balance. Matt, give us your opinion on Tyrone Tracy in that running back room. Yeah, I, I, I like the pickup. I mean, I kind of wish we went – with like a more like a well known running back, like I was hoping for like a Blake Corum or a, a Braylon Allen, one of those guys. But I think Tyron Tracy's a good running back pickup. I think he could possibly. I don't know if he's necessarily going to win like the number one running back job for the Giants. I think definitely at least like a number two running back. Possibly there's a chance he wins it, but I think Matt Breida is likely going to get the number one job. I I no. Um... It's going to be Singletary next year. Oh, that's right. Singletary. I forgot about him. Yeah. Singletary will be this. Seems like Singletary, Tracy, and then Eric Gray will definitely be in the mix. And then you also have the South Carolina running back that they picked up, the one that hasn't played yet. They have him blazing speed. And also Tyron Tracy return kicks with these new kickoff rules we're seeing. I mean, if you have a good kick returner, you could potentially easily be getting to the 40 and 50 every time. And for an offense like the Giants – which has not been good. That's that's really good for us. If we could nail some special teams and get good yardage, that could really help us. And you think about it, without a running game, we need to pick this pick up the slack. The running game won't be like it was with Saquon. So you think about it, you're able to get these great returns and and really get good yardage just off kick returns. And Matt, that brings up to someone named Saquon Barkley. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about you, Matt, but I I mean we've developed a new hatred towards him. I I can't stand him. He was at the Sixers next game last night. I was so happy the Knicks got that win in front of him. I just, I despise him. Yeah, it's unfortunate though. He went from being our star player to going to our biggest rival. It sucks that it had to happen this way. Like I've experienced this before, being an Islanders fan, seeing John Tavares leave the Islanders, just lying, saying that like he was going to stay, and then he goes to Toronto. I'll never forget his return to the Coliseum. One of the most thrilling games I've watched as an Islanders fan. But yeah, it's going to be like that 2.0. I mean. Barkley's now going to Philadelphia. I mean, I'm not a Knicks fan. Like, I'm a Nets fan, but I don't follow much basketball, to be honest with you. But it's going to be crazy. The second he steps foot on the field, like, for the first snap, offensive eagle snap at that game, whenever it is, I don't know when. Schedule comes out soon, so we'll have an episode come talk coming out where we're going to talk about the schedule. But the, you're just going to hear so much booing at MetLife. I don't think there will. Oh, Matt, we'll be booing him okay. too. I mean, oh, yeah. 80,000 people, over 80,000 plus, 82,500 are going to be standing up booing at him. And he deserves it. I mean, he says all those things all the Giants didn't offer me. Going to Philadelphia is unacceptable. That's your rival. Yeah. I mean, you can't do that. You know, you say all these things. I want to be a Giant for life, but you want all this money and you go to Philly for a dirty birds, dirty player. Yeah. Hopefully that dirty player on our dirty turf tears his ACL. I really wouldn't complain that. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be sad if that happened. Neither would I. It's sad though. Neither would I. It's it's disappointing because like he went from being uh the favorite at whenever you're walking on MetLife, the concourse at a Giants game, you're like 95 I don't know about 95, but like definitely like 75% of the yeah. jerseys you're gonna see there are Barkley and no that more That was like when we lost OBJ. I mean I like know OBJ and Saquon Barkley were our like for me and Matt, those are our childhood players. I mean, yep. you, you remember those are the days when, ever, like for us, we really started getting into the sport, watching those two guys just dominate out there. Obviously, Barkley's been gone for a few years now. Uh, Beckham's been gone, and now Barkley's gone. And, you know, I it's just it's tough to see both of them leave like that. And uh, seeing Barkley leave to go to Philly, I mean, I, I hope the Giants are able to contain him. But you're running behind that Philly line. He'll probably have a lot more success than he did behind ours. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's going to be a ton of booing the second Barkley returns to MetLife. It's going to be super yeah. loud. That, I, if I'm not there, I'm – as of right now, I plan on going. I don't know when the game is. Like, obviously, we don't know when the schedule is yet. But if that's – whenever it is, like, I really hope I get to go to that game. Cause even if I don't go, I'm going to be booing from my couch at home or wherever I'm yeah. watching the game. Yeah, the boos will be raining down on Saquon Barkley and the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, there's nothing about Philly we like. We've talked about it. We're pretty open on this podcast. We hate Philadelphia. We hate every sport. We hate everything about Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And we hate their players. And we hate Saquon Barkley for going there. Even more that he's a traitor. And, you know, we don't like him. So, you know, it, it brings up interesting. I mean, I'm starting to get excited for this season. I really like to see some of these guys get out there. Guys like Neighbors, Theo Johnson. 
see Tracy take some carries. I really like to see these guys go out there and play, especially on the offensive side of the ball. That's what we've struggled at. I want to see this offense go out there and play, play good football, Matt. And mm -hmm. I think this is an exciting team. You know, we'll, we, we've been pumping out a lot of content on uh, TikTok. We got some content coming out on Twitter. And uh, we hope you guys keep on uh, checking all that content out, Matt. Yeah. So real quickly, I want to say, since the schedule comes out, I think sometime next week, I don't know what day it comes, the NFL schedules come out, but let's do a quick prediction right now. So who do you think the first home and away game will be for the Giants? I'll give my picks. Okay, I, I'll go first. I think um I think it'll be Dallas. I think they'll go back to Dallas this year. Okay. But I think they'll probably play in Dallas for the first week. And then I think the first home game. Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe the an AFC like North team, like we play the Ravens, I think, this year. We played okay. the Steelers. Maybe one of them. We have well, we played the Steelers on the road, so. Maybe either Ravens or Bengals. Yeah, the Ravens or Bengals, maybe. That would be a crazy. Um, I think our first home – I'm going to go home first. So my prediction – I have a weird prediction. that I don't know why, but I have a very odd gut feeling that our first home game is going to be against the Colts this year. And then yeah. our next – our first away game – going to throw a bit of a curveball here. I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, so we're going to keep on posting content. Keep on checking out our TikTok. It's been doing really well. We're getting a lot of videos. It's been really good. Twitter, too. And uh, keep on following us, liking, and subscribing on every single one of our platforms. We'll keep on pumping out content. That's it for me, Matt. Any closing statements? No, I mean, that's really it for the episode. I think we really summed up everything. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a few friends. And we'll see you guys later. Let's go Giants.